when I look back at the movie, I just think about what great hair I had in the movie. <laughs> and I didn't appreciate it at the time, no, you know? I did, though. I was a big fan of your hair. Were you? Yes. I appreciate it. The Lost Boys as a whole, the story is rooted in family. So even though it's a, a, a fictional story and it's and it's got all this kind of crazy stuff going on, it's it's the whole base of it is about these three families and how they intertwine, if you really think about it. So it's a family film, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, but that was something that Joel was always very cognizant of. And I think that that is something that really hits home and makes it feel naturalistic, you know? It's not just a science fiction movie. It's not just a vampire movie. It's got that that true virtuous piece of it. I yeah, guess. well, and you know, this that's the thing is that uh, when we were, we do these conventions and we, we, we talk on different panels and I got to hear Jason Patrick talk a little bit about his approach to the role and, and, and it, it sort of uh, exemplifies, I think, there was real stuff going on. Like Jason Patrick, D Jason Patrick didn't want to just do a vampire movie. He's a serious actor, a serious guy. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to just do. He doesn't want to make it, you know, just like your run-of-the-mill vampire movie. And so I think there was a lot of that energy going on where people really wanted to make something that actually had some substance. And mm -hmm. and and I think that's part of the staying power. Be one of us. Notice anything unusual about Santa Carla yet? It's a pretty cool place. If you're a Martian. Or a vampire. We were cast that way because we were, you know, we, we had good chemistry. But Joel was very, Joel gave us a lot of time together to hang out. And at the time, it just seemed like we were having fun hanging out. We shot a lot of our stuff on the weekends. The comic book store stuff was on the weekends. And so really during the week up in Santa Cruz, the three of us, especially us, spent a lot of time hanging out and having, you know, just a really great time, uh, you know, like that and bonding in that way. Yeah, I mean, with, with Haim and I, it was an instant attraction. You know, we just, we instantly felt like a kinship, which is interesting because we were kind of poised to be, you know, nemesi, I guess you would <laughs> right. say, right? We were kind of set up in a rival position because he was dating a girl that I had a crush on. So he was kind of stealing my territory the way I saw it. The teen <laughs> magazines, the name, the thing. I was like, come on, who is this guy? Um, and then I'm in the wardrobe uh, session with Joel the very first day. And he's like on the phone with somebody. He goes, yeah, we've got the two Corys in it. I'm like, the two Corys? Who are the two? I'm just one guy. What are you, you seeing double here? So I was really set up to not like him. And then before I knew it, I came home from school one day and Corey had left me a personal voice message on my answering machine. You know, he's like, hey, how you doing, man? What's going on? We're going to be working together and, you know, like, let's get together. Let's let's maybe go to the beach or hang out. Let's do something, man. So, I mean, it wasn't like the studio or the director set this up. This was Corey on his own reached out to me and left me a personal message. And at the end of it, like, we got together and we instantly clicked. We, from that moment on, we're pretty much inseparable. You know where Hudson's Bluff is? I can't beat your bike. You just have to try and keep up. How far are you willing to go, Michael? Honestly, it was really more those guys. Yeah, the older kids. The, that the were having boys. the crazy times, yeah, you know. We, we were just trying to hold it together and do our jobs and, you know, and it was, I think Haim was dating a girl, Jameson was dating a girl. Yeah, we all had our, kind of our, first all had our, our first girlfriends that were at home. So, you know, we'd come home from the set and we'd get on the phone with our girlfriends and probably yeah. spend two hours talking on the phone to our girlfriends and not really thinking much about anything else other than work and, and that. But, yeah. you know, that said, we loved the idea that we were kids and we got to ride around on bikes and yeah. it was during the summer and we were on this boardwalk for, what, five weeks or something like that. Yeah. Now you know what we are. <laughs> now you know what you are. Help me! Stay back! Stay back! Help me! My little brother, a vampire. You wait till mom finds out, buddy. Don't forget the soundtrack, because the soundtrack yeah. was such a big part of it. You know, having Roger Daltrey, having In Excess, having like all these great yeah, such a performers, soundtrack. you know. 
And then yeah. you've got the original song Cry Little Sister that of course became the most played song from a film soundtrack in strip clubs all over America. <laughs> and then they got the sweaty sax guy. And by the way, Tim Capella still goes out and performs without his shirt on. Yeah. He oils himself up. He's even got the collar. Yeah. So, you and know. He's great too. He still he, plays he the sax. He's awesome. Man. Still yeah. does it. Yeah.